Sabbath day is not Saturday and it is not Sunday. So people, stop fighting over a day. Stop arguing over this day. Oh, is Sabbath Saturday? Is it Sunday? Those will not uh, rest on Saturday. They are all going to hell. That is heresy. And um, SDA, that is Seventh Day Adventist. Most of the time, they are pushing people to, you know, relax. By Friday, others they are saying, by Friday, I don't even work because I want to keep the Sabbath. They are lost as a golf ball in high weight. Now, let me explain to you what Sabbath is all about. Now, let's see first, where did Sabbath start from? It started from Genesis. Remember, when God created the whole world in six days and on the seventh day he rested, does that mean that God got tired? No, God is all knowing, all powerful. He didn't get tired in anything. He just rested. He ceased from working. Okay? When you rest, you stop working. Now, understand one thing. Now, we go further to the book of Exodus where we see uh, Moses giving some laws to the children of Israel. He says in Exodus 20 verse 8 to 11, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Did you hear that? Six days you shall labor and do all your work for six days. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, your manservant, or your maidservant, or your cattle, or your stranger that is within your gates. For in six days the Lord has made heaven and earth. He has quoted the Genesis, the beginning. Six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and the sea, and all that in them is and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Okay, now people will come running and bashing you and telling you, you see, on the Saturday, you should rest. On the Sunday, you should rest. Everybody has his own things. But now, let's see, what is this Sabbath day? You have to understand that the Bible tells us what actually Sabbath day is representing in the book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 8. The Bible says, For the Son of Man, the Son of Man, is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Okay. So Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. So if you want to understand Sabbath, then look at Jesus. Did you get the point? So what did Jesus come to do? What did Jesus come to do? If we are being told, the only way we can observe uh, Sabbath is by looking unto Jesus. Listen what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 3. It says, For we which have believed, believed in who? Jesus, do enter into rest. So if you believe in Jesus, you have entered into his rest. Now you have rested. You have rested from what? From your work that you've been doing. From your labors. Remember Jesus said, all of you who are troubled, who are heavy laden, come unto me and I shall give you rest. I shall give you Sabbath. I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Do you get the point? So Sabbath, it is literally representing salvation. So when you get saved, you have entered into his rest. And you become righteous. You're a new creature. Listen to the book of Second Corinthians 5 verse 21. What it says. The Bible says, For he has made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin? That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Who is this one who knew no sin? Jesus Christ. So now, if you know Jesus... You will enter into his rest. You will be saved. You, all your labors will be taken down. My friends, let's see something else here. What is going to happen to those who do not want to be saved? Are they going to enter into this rest? Those unbelievers who have refused to believe in Jesus Christ? Hebrews 4 verse 9 to 11, the Bible says, There remains therefore a rest to the people of God. Mm -hmm. Those who are going to believe, there is a rest for them. There is a day they are going to rest. Let's listen. For what? For he that is entered in, into his rest, he has also ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Listen to that. So, if you have entered into the rest of God, you have ceased from your own works. You have ceased from the works of the law. Remember, 
God had put a law that we should follow. And that law that we were to follow, nobody could be able to fulfill it. Remember, the law of God consisted of about 613 laws in the first five books of the Bible. Do not do this, do not do this, do not do this. Nobody could be able to attain that level of righteousness that God wanted. And the Bible in the book of James says that if you break one law, you're broken all laws. So who is this person who could be able to keep all these laws? It is only Jesus Christ himself. And that's why the Bible said, Jesus did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. He fulfilled all the laws required by God the Father, so that now if we enter into him, if we believe in him, now we have rested from all our labors. We have rested from all our works. We don't need to do all these works of the law anymore. We will rest. We don't need to carry a, a cow to the altar. We don't need to carry a sheep to the altar for all these things to go and try to cleanse ourselves. Now, Jesus had done that for us. When we believe in him, we have entered in it, into his rest. Listen to verse 11, what it says. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. You heard that? Let us labor to enter into that rest. When you work to enter into there, how do you labor to get into that rest? By hearing the gospel, by believing the gospel, by knowing what Jesus did for you. Now you get to enter. This is like you strive to enter through the narrow gate. And when you enter, my friend, you rest from all your labors. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So when you are still in unbelief, you have not yet rested from your labor. Do you see? So do you understand that the day of Sabbath, it is literally meaning salvation. It doesn't mean a day. So stop fighting about Saturday or Sunday. People always say, oh, it is Saturday, it is Sunday. So we need to rest on this day, on that day. No, they are still carnally minded. They do not understand that it was meaning Jesus. And all the rituals and all the things which were spoken of in the Old Testament, they were all focusing Jesus. The tithes, the offerings, the seeds, the day of rest, Sabbath, everything. Even the Holy Communion and everything, it was for, <laughs> foreshadowing a man, Jesus Christ. And when you understand this, you have come to the knowledge of the truth. 